desire is for you to live in abundance. But how can you enjoy the supernatural wealth God has provided for you if you don't understand how to meet your needs supernaturally? In this insightful classic, Pastor Chris shares with you vital principles of meeting your needs supernaturally. When you enter into this place in Christ, you cease from your struggles. So take your mind away from anything else as your source. The Lord is your source. Your life will be revolutionized as you open your heart to receive and practice the divine insights this message unveils to you. Meeting our needs supernaturally. Remember in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Read it for me. Want to go. <laughs> but my God shall supply all your need according to your crying, according to your wailing and weeping, according to your begging, if you can beg hard enough. My God shall supply all your need according to how serious the need is. Oh, Father, you know how serious this is. He knows how serious it is. Is that what's written in the Word? That He'll supply your need according to the seriousness? Come on, talk to me. My God shall supply all your need according to the seriousness of the situation. No. No matter how serious, you can be crying. It's not going to change anything. Look at it. But my God shall supply all your need. I'm interested in the fact that Paul didn't say all our. All our. What about him? What about Paul? Why, why, why is he talking to these babes? Can you see it? I think you've suddenly understood why he says, Yo, what about him? My God, he didn't say our God. My God shall supply your need. What's going on here? My God, your need. Why does it our God shall supply all our need? They will know this is a wonderful confession. But here's a father talking to babes. They haven't understood yet. They still have a sense of need. Can you see it? They still have a sense of need. They still have a sense of lack. And this is a godly counsel. My God shall supply. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My God shall supply all your need. What about me? Turn to verse 13. Verse 13. Read for me. That is the I. He didn't say we. I, I can. Can you see the difference? I can do all things through Christ. That strengthens me. I can. No sense of need. No sense of lack. Amazing. Amazing. Look at the difference between the I and you and your. I can do all things. I can. What a mentality. What a way of thinking. You know, pastors, 
Sometimes you might find yourself in a situation thinking, looking at men. Because you, you, you need money. You need finances for some things. And you might be looking at those who you think have the ability to do it. Take your eyes away from men. How can I tell you this? Take your eyes away from men. Take your eyes away from men. Okay, since three of your huge financial partners stopped coming to church, you've been broke since then, and you have been angry with God since then. You almost feel like leaving the church and following them to wherever they went. <laughs> Isn't that sad? And sometimes you find two pastors angry with each other because one's church, the, the, some partners who are very, you know, they were invited to the other church. And after they were invited to the other church, they stayed. Now this pastor is upset. Then some are evangelizing partners to win them to their church. Why do you stoop down to human level? Why do you stoop down to human levels? Let me tell you something. You know the international uh, pastors and partners conference, we recognize our partners and who are our partners. They're actually all those who are laboring together with us in the gospel. Now, we recognize all of them because... The Word of God tells us to recognize those who are laboring together with us in the gospel. But he never told us that they are our source. All right? No, he never said so. No. Everyone has to do what God gives them the ability to do. There's somebody close to you, wake up, brother or sister, wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. I want you to think differently. Whatever needs that the church may face, I want you to have a different mentality. Understand first and foremost that the church of Jesus Christ is a spiritual, supernatural body. And so, whatever need there is must be met supernaturally. Start thinking like that. Let me show you something. I think that last year, if you don't find it in your notes, I don't know what you were writing. But you should find this in your notes. Some of the things I'm telling you now, they were there. St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 14. I want to read from verse 15. From verse 15. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the mother to the way that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victory. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat <laughs> in the desert. He says, Feed. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. Remember how they found that out. He had asked them to go look around for what they got. All right. Five loaves and two fishes. And we got a multitude. He said, bring them here to me. Bring me the five loaves and two fishes. Hmm. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. 
and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. You know, there's so much to learn from Jesus. Oh boy, so much to learn. Oh. Okay, but no, 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 go, go back there. I just want to take a little part here. The Bible says he asked for the loaves and fish. And they brought them to him. Let's see how most of us here receive the offerings. So, they bring the offerings. And we receive the offerings. Right? And then, we bless the people. Correct? God bless you and multiply it back to you. Amen? What do we carry? The offering as it was. How many times have you blessed the offering? I'm sure not frequently. But it's the offering you're going to use. And then you find it's not enough. It, but it's not blessed. No, call almost anybody. Call, call to pray over the offering. Thank you, Lord, for the offering. They thank him for the offering. And pray for the blessing of the people that give it. That's all. That's the content of the prayer, most, mostly. No one really blesses the offering. Now, the next thing is about what is the blessing. Now, the word used for Jesus blessing the bread and fish here, Greek eulogio, meaning that he spoke words of empowerment. Meaning that he invoked the ability to prosper into the bread and the fish. It was an invocation of power for the bread and the fish to prosper. And that means to multiply, to increase, and to do what it was sent to do. You do what I'm telling you. You will be amazed. You, I guarantee you that you will be amazed. You will be amazed. When you receive the tithes and the offerings, you pray over the money and say in the name. Now there, there's power in our words. I'll talk a little about that. There's power in our words. We've got the power to invoke the Spirit of God into the money, into the offerings, into whatever it is that's been brought to the house of God for God's use. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I invoke into these offerings the power to prosper, the power to increase. I command you to multiply in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the things that we need to do. And you will be more than enough in Jesus' name. 